Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Risk of widespread famine looms amid re escalation of civil war in Tigray. Chancellor Angela Merkel's US visit met with protests for vaccine patent waivers. Lebanon's PM designate Saad Hariri resigns as deadlock over cabinet continues. And in our video section, we take a look at the first year anniversary since the historic strike by app delivery workers in Brazil. In our first story, the re-escalation of fighting in Ethiopia's Tigray region has placed its 6 million people at risk of full-blown famine. Despite the declaration of a unilateral ceasefire by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, the civil war has continued. By June 30th, the Tigray People's Liberation Front had besieged several towns including Mekel, Adigrat, Alwa and Aksum. Since the conflict began in November 2020, the Ethiopian federal troops have been joined by Eritrean soldiers and the ethnic Amhara militias. On July 12th and 13th, the TPLF forces fought these militias to regain control over the fertile southern and western regions of Tigray. These areas are inhabited by both Tigrayan and Amhara people but have been claimed by the Amhara state. Prime Minister Ahmed had stated on June 28th that the ceasefire would hold until the end of the farming season. However, three Ethiopian regions confirmed on July 15th that they too were deploying troops to Tigray. As per local reports, forces from Oromia, Sidama and the southern nations are mobilizing at the front line. The violent conflict has pushed over 350,000 people into famine. Farmers have lost over 90% of their harvest since last year. Over 87% of households were estimated to have used up their food stock at the start of June. Between May and June, 70% of people surveyed were suffering from acute food insecurity. 1.8 million people have been classified under emergency levels of food insecurity and 1.9 million people under crisis. The figures are part of the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification Report. Further expansion of war in Amhara will increase chances of famine given that 1 million people are in a state, are in the state, in the state are already facing a food crisis. We now go to the United States where protests were held in different parts of the country as German Chancellor Angela Merkel arrived for her 19th official visit. The outgoing head of state met with President Joe Biden in Washington DC on July 15. Meanwhile, activists who were part of the Free the Vaccine Alliance held demonstrations in several cities. They were demanding that the Chancellor stop blocking patent waivers for COVID-19 vaccines. Rich countries including the G7 have consistently stalled efforts to issue a TRIPS waiver to expand manufacturing. 63 countries including India and South Africa have submitted a three-year proposal to lift patents on necessary medical supplies. While several countries including the US have expressed support for this measure, no significant progress has been made. As a result, the global vaccine gap has continued to widen. Less than 3% of the population of the entire African continent has received one dose. Meanwhile, there has been a 43% increase in COVID-19 deaths on a week-to-week -week basis. Body bags were placed outside the White House along with a puppet resembling Merkel on Thursday. Banners with slogan including delay is equal to death and free vaccines were also placed. Another protest was held at the John Hopkins University where Merkel received an honorary degree. Trade justice and health advocacy groups including Oregon Nurses Association and Portland Jobs with Justice also held protests. A major demonstration was held outside the headquarters of Pfizer in New York City. The pharmaceutical giant has produced one of the leading COVID-19 vaccines while consistently opposing waivers. A sit-in demonstration was held by groups including People's Action, Health Gap and AIDS advocacy group ACT UP. Our next story is from Lebanon where Prime Minister designate Saad Hariri has resigned. He made the announcement on July 15th following a meeting with President Michel Aoun. Hariri stated that the President had not approved his list of proposed cabinet members. This is the second time that Hariri has resigned as Prime Minister, the first time, being, first time following the mass anti-government protests in 2019. His government has tried to impose fresh taxes amid rising poverty while failing to provide basic public services. He was then designated to take over the post in October 2020 after the Beirut port blast in August. The then Prime Minister Hassan Diab resigned after the explosion killed over 200 people and injured over 6,000. In a statement published at the National News Agency, Hariri accused the President of blocking the cabinet formation. In an official statement, the President had stated that Hariri had rejected amendments related to ministries, sectarian distribution, etc. News of Hariri's resignation led to protests by his supporters in several areas. He had supposedly wanted to form a technocratic cabinet, which would mean that most of his members would not be elected representatives. This would also compromise the sectarian representation mandated by the constitution. Despite popular demands for such reforms, the parties holding a majority in the parliament have opposed them. The political deadlock has worsened Lebanon's economic crisis. The caretaker government has cut down fuel, medicine and food subsidies. The price of subsidized bread has been increased by 18%, the fifth increase this year. The currency has lost over 90% of its value and widespread power outages have been reported. And for our final story, we go to Brazil, which recently marked one year since a historic strike by app delivery workers. Drivers working for food companies in Uber held protests in Sao Paulo in July 2020. As Brazil went into lockdown, the number of people working for delivery companies increased. As of April 2021, the food app alone had 160,000 active workers. 
Despite this increase in demand, app workers continue to face poor working conditions and low pay. Moreover, they are classified as freelancers and companies claim that they have the freedom to set their working hours. One year after the strike, the conditions have still not improved. Here is a video feature by Brazil Difato on the worker struggle. No material change occurred. Rates didn't go up. There was no emergency aid for app delivery workers. I keep challenging the owner of the iFood app to a debate, but he doesn't even respond. He pretends like we don't even exist, but he has changed the minds of delivery workers. Although many delivery guys are still hung up on this idea of entrepreneurship, a reactionary idea, now they know that if they don't fight, they won't get anything. If the strike is not done right, it's just pyrotechnics. If the people don't go to the streets in the right way having a go, a strategy and a tactic, it is just pyrotechnics. It will only be nice to take a picture, to take a picture, to make a video and to pretend that the people are getting organized. It takes time to organize this category. To me, uberization is a consequence of the industrial revolution. Technology should support the improvement of workers' lives. Machines should support workers to produce more. Produce more in order to gain more and work less. But bosses understand that that technology can do the work of 10 employees. They instruct just one employee to operate the machine and fire all the other 9 workers. Thus, a thing that was to support the workers happens to take their jobs. Today we have a new technology, which is the app. The mobile phone is 1984 by George Orwell. It controls you. The app delivery worker works all day long like a dog. From 9 in the morning till midnight doing low paying deliveries. 4 reais, 5 reais. Then, when he's coming back home, the app rings. A 35 reais delivery. There is no need for a boss ordering you to work anymore. Many app delivery workers say, I can turn on and off the app at any time. I set up my schedules. Then it is necessary to approach him and warn him by saying, this is a lie. You don't wake up when you want. You wake up when the depths tell you to do so. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.